What's up everyone, welcome to another video and today I'll be going over a very important JavaScript interview question which will help you to crack your web related or JavaScript related interview in the upcoming future. So the question that I'm going to be attempting in this video is a question that I've encountered multiple times in my interview journey and this is a very important question and I want you to pay a lot of focus on it and a lot of attention to it because it covers a lot of fundamental JavaScript concepts and it is a very good question to test a lot of different fundamentals related Related to JavaScript. So let's just dive directly into the question. So as you guys can see, we're given the question and it states that we're given an expensive function, let's say this, and it makes an expensive API call. So let's say that the fetch function is being called and an API is being called and it takes a lot of time to get the data back. So it is expensive in nature. And the function is attached to a button. So it is attached to a click listener. And every time the button is clicked, the API call is being made. So the problem at hand over here is that now that let's say that the user who's using the button clicks the button 100 times a minute. So in every minute, there are going to be 100 expensive API calls that are being made. And that is a problem. So to optimize this, we're being required to create a delay of t milliseconds between each eligible call, meaning that if my function was called initially at time zero, then my second time that the function is being called can only be called after t time passes between the first time that I called my function and executed it. So all of the calls that are being made in between that are ignored and are not executed. Now, when you're in an interview setting, you don't need to rush the question. You don't need to jump right into coding it. You need to ask yourself a bunch of questions. So you're given a lot of things over here. So you want to formulate the logic with your interviewer. You want to ask some questions back and forth. And once your interviewer is comfortable with your understanding of the question, then you want to dive into the coding part and solve it for your interviewer. So we can see over here that we are saying that it, we want to create a delay of t milliseconds between each call. So that that means that there's going to be some kind of a boolean involved. Let's say that we make a boolean and call it, is it executable? And when the function is being called, is it executable is being sent to false because now we can't execute it unless a time delay of t seconds has passed or t milliseconds has passed. So when the time delay of t milliseconds has passed, then we need to set that boolean to true because now we can execute the next function call. So we need to ask ourselves the question, what is a property within JavaScript that can allow us to do that, to keep track of time? and this pops the idea of set timeout. So we can use set timeout to say that after a period of t milliseconds, after our function is executed, we can just reset the boolean to true so that next time that the function is being called, it can just call it and then set the boolean to false again. So once we have that understanding of this problem developed between ourselves and the interviewer and we have formulated it clearly to them and they give us the signal to start coding the question, then only do you start coding the question. So I'm going to start coding it for you guys and I'll explain it along the way so we can say that we have the better function and I'm storing it in a const. And now the important thing is that we need to store some kind of state to keep track of whether the function is executable right now or it is not executable. And to do that, we can use a closure. And if you don't know what a closure is, I'll link a video explaining it below in my description so you can go watch that video and know what a closure is. But basically what a closure does is that it maintains a state for you. So you can think of it as a permanent state that is maintained across all function calls. So I can say that that variable, let's call it, is executable and we can initially set it to true because initially if we call it it should be called so then afterwards we return a new function from within and what this function is going to do it's first going to check if it's executable or not if our function call is executable and over here we can notice that we forgot to import the function and the time delay so we can just get that as our arguments so we can call it punk and i can call it t and over here if we if our function is executable right now we can say yes call the function and then just set is executable to false now that the next time this runs it won't be able to go inside that if condition branch and it won't execute the function that we have passed as a parameter the next step that we need to do is to somehow set this is executable to true after the time delay has passed so what we do over here is we create a set timeout and the set timeout takes a callback function and what it does is that it calls the callback function after a time period of t milliseconds and what we're 
basically gonna do inside of it is just set the is executable part to true so that now after the t millisecond time delay has passed and now there's a function call being done it again goes to the if condition it evaluates as true and then it calls the function as hard as the question might have seen this is basically the core logic that the function required now a trick to the question is that the function that we're executing might have some arguments as well so we might want to take that into consideration and what we can do is that we can get the arguments over here by using the arguments property which is basically an array of all the arguments so in javascript you don't need to define the arguments rather you can get it from just this array so you can dynamically pass arguments in javascript and you also need to get the context which needs to be passed while we're executing the function and how we now execute it is now by using apply which i'm going to go over in another video but what it really does is that it provides the context and the argument to the function and we can pass in the context and just the argument so this will cover this part of applying the arguments and giving the context to the function call so this is pretty much the solution and if you write the solution down uh, you will be able to satisfy your interview and your interview will be happy with what you came up with and now this might be a very short solution but the thing is that it might be tricky to come up within an interview and this whole concept itself is called throttling so if you want to search it up if you want to search throttling up you can search it up later if you want and do more research on it also i'll provide this code for you to experiment with so that you can see for yourself that it will work like it is supposed to so this is pretty much the problem that i wanted to share with you guys today this is asked in a lot of big companies today especially the fang or the mang companies it's a very common interview question within those companies it's a very common interview question within all of the other companies as well so you want to be well rehearsed with this question and i hope that you found this video insightful i'm going to be making a lot more tutorials related to javascript and interview questions in the future so make sure to subscribe to the channel and like this video if you enjoyed the content and as always see you guys in the next video